As we all know, guys, anarchism is when white guys in black shirts burn down ethnic minority communities. It's when punk rock bands do stuff. If anarchy happened, everyone would forget how to speak words, we'd all become barbarians running around punching each other, and everything would be on fire, including the roads. Oh no, not our sacred roads! And capitalism is when Coca-Cola death squads. It's when money. It's also paradoxically when you haven't got any money, because giant corporations hoard it all in their vaults, and that explains why they're also massively in debt. And it's also when the Monopoly man runs around eating poor people. You know, because he's very, very hungry. So anarcho-capitalism is when there's absolute chaos, but it's also when big businesses steal from you and use that wealth to pollute the planet. So whenever someone says that they're an ANCAP, this is what people are thinking in their heads. They think this guy must be absolutely insane, because why would anyone want to live in such a world? So, my patron, Pablo, asked me a couple of times, because I procrastinate for reasons I explained in another video, he asked if I was an anarcho-capitalist, and if not, what do I think of anarcho-capitalism? But as I just explained, people don't know what these terms actually mean, and so they jump to silly conclusions. So, what I want to do here is set the record straight as to what anarcho-capitalism is, and then say whether I am an ANCAP or not. When the government builds a bridge, you see the guys working on the bridge. What you don't see is that all the government has done is move those workers and resources from the rest of the economy to the bridge. If the government hadn't got involved, the guys working on the bridge would be working in the rest of the economy to improve the living standards of the people within it. The resources consumed by the bridge would also be going to the rest of the economy as well. So. Even if it was a one-to-one -one trade, the government hasn't created additional wealth out of thin air. All they've done is taken resources, including labour, from the rest of us, and shifted those resources to where they, the central planners, think is best. This is the concept of the seen and the unseen, brilliantly outlined in Henry Hazlitt's Economics in One Lesson, which I highly recommend that you all read. Of course, it's not a one-to-one -one trade. For every one worker on the bridge, there's a robber, also known as a taxman, a tax enforcer, also known as a policeman, and a play-doh, also known as a politician. There's bureau rats, BBC ministers of propaganda, royal family members, loads of different people taking their cut from the resources robbed from the rest of us. And so, instead of just five guys working on the bridge, it's really more like 20 people who have been sucked out of the regular economy, most of whom are not actually productive. The stupidity expands to meet the needs of the expanding stupidity. And if the consumer wanted a bridge and was willing to pay for it, then profit could be made by constructing the bridge. Entrepreneurs would leap to the opportunity to meet the demands of the consumer by building the bridge for that profit. Thus, if no bridge exists, or isn't already under construction by the market, then the consumer doesn't actually want nor need that bridge. Therefore, there's absolutely no need for the government to build the bridge in the first place, because it's not in demand. If it was in demand, then the entrepreneur would be building that bridge. So, when you see the government building a bridge or doing any other project, then that means there was no real demand for that bridge or project. In other words, it's a misallocation of scarce resources that have alternative uses, to quote Thomas Sowell, who's not even an ANCAP. Yes, people will use the bridge, assuming it actually gets completed and doesn't fall down, which is likely to do if the government builds it, and thus it does provide a benefit to the people using it. However, if the government hadn't gotten involved in the first place, the resources would have been put to better use elsewhere in the economy. What we have is a host of missed opportunities in the real economy, and what we're left with is a fake economy. Our living standards thus decline for every penny that the government takes from us and spends on public works. Taxation, regulation and inflation caused by the state central banks, are all various means of extracting wealth from you to keep you poor. 
The only way you can earn money is to provide goods and services to other people. You can either earn your own wage by producing goods and services for others, or you can trade your time for a paycheck working for someone else who produces those goods and services. Either way, that's a good thing. Those processes make our living standards improve. On the other hand, the government takes resources from the rest of us by force and thus makes us poorer. The state is not a god, it's not a wizard, it's not an alchemist. It cannot create resources out of thin air. It cannot provide the things it promises you without extracting those resources from the rest of us. Nothing is free but the cheese and the trap. They'll promise you the world and they'll deliver you into poverty because that's the mechanism of government. For this, and for many other reasons, the free market is far superior to any other economic system. But the unfortunate thing is that the establishment do not like it because they're in a position of power. Power means power over other people. And why would they do a hard day's work when you can do that work for them? They lord it about in their manners and us peasants labour in the fields. That's their utopian paradise. They're intent on maintaining slavery, and that's why they extract resources from the rest of us. It's why the taxation system exists in the first place. It's feudalism and slavery, pure and simple. And so, what they do is they employ mystics to convince you that this is all for your benefit. Capitalism is a dirty word. The theologian known as Karl Marx coined the term as a smear. And now everyone just assumes it means sinful money and greedy corporations. Except corporations, or syndicates, are created by the state. In fact, corporations are actually destroyed by the free market, as shown by books like The Myth of the Robber Barons by Folsom. But I don't want to get into the nitty-gritty today. What I do want to make clear is that a monopoly is not a free market, obviously. So, a free market guy like myself is against the government and the corporations, knowing that they are one and the same. Syndicalism, fascism, whatever you want to call it. The government is a monopoly corporation in and of itself, and it's clearly not a free market. And, by the way, some ANCAPs don't realise this. They think corporations are part of the free market, and they end up defending the corporations. No. Corporations are state entities, and you're accidentally defending the very thing you hate, socialism. So I actually disagree when some ANCAPs, even those from the Mises Institute, defend corporations as if they're products of the free market. Guys, they're not products of the free market. If you watch my video titled Public vs. Private, The Historic Definitions of Socialism and Capitalism, you will get clarity on this issue. Anarchy just means no state. It doesn't mean everything's on fire or people are barbarians. It just means no state. And people will say, but without the state to enforce law and order, then it would be chaos. Because it's definitely not chaos and disorder right now, even with our beloved Monopoly Corporation running the show. But again, anarchy just means no state. It doesn't mean no law and order. Or no fire services or no roads. <laughs> If there's a market for it, which there obviously is, then these services would be fulfilled by the entrepreneur. Imagine a world where we have multiple competing restaurants, all catering to our various needs. You could go to a magical place called McDonald's, or Pizza Hut, or KFC, or Nando's, or some other random local place. You name it. I mean, that sounds pretty good, right? I know it sounds like an impossible dream, I mean, imagine if we had all that variety of different options today. What a, what a wonderful utopia that would be. But I think this is possible if we allow a free market to do what is needed. Well, let's also imagine multiple competing fire services aiming to provide you with the best and quickest service possible. Imagine multiple police services all competing to be the best and actually tackle crime instead of being the criminals themselves. Imagine a world where there were multiple competing judicial services, with the most corrupt and incompetent judges going out of business, like every single judge currently involved in the family law system. 
That's why the state has monopoly control right now, because if there were multiple competing judicial services, our fascist governments would be out of business in a heartbeat. Same with the military. There would be a market for security, and these multiple competing police and military services would aim to provide you with the most efficient security at the cheapest prices. Obviously, I'm skirting over an entire ocean of explanation here, and I know the knee-jerk reaction will be, none of that is possible, it wouldn't work in reality, it's a utopia. And I understand that criticism, and it's generally accepted and understood in the ANCAP community that the market for security is the one that trips people up the most, because we're all so used to just thinking in terms of the monopoly corporations providing law and order that any other possibility cannot be imagined. However, if you've never heard these ideas before, I'd say it's worth looking into and thinking about, because the alternative is that we just have more of the same. And I don't know about you, but more of the same isn't what I want. My overarching point here is that people think anarchy is when white guys in black shirts burn down ethnic minority communities, or when punk rock bands do stuff. But these things are happening right now with the state. You know, we haven't got anarchy and these things are still happening. Now, in a free market society, you might still have these things, but you'd also have an effective market for security that would defend your private property from those who wish to rob and enslave you. The world would be a much safer and far more stable place if we didn't have giant monopoly corporations known as states running the show. That's what free market people like me, want. And now we get to the question, am I an ANCAP? Do I believe in anarcho-capitalism? And honestly, maybe? I'm certainly leaning towards it, but you've got to understand that I only realised that socialism was evil when I was 31, and I'm 36 now, and the past five years have been a grind, to say the least, this channel is hard work, so I've not had sufficient time to read the literature in enough detail on the anarcho part of anarcho-capitalism to come to any definite conclusions. I can tell you that the arguments for the free market made by Mises and so on completely outclass the arguments for socialist mysticism, but it's the anarcho side of it that I've not had sufficient time to read about. Maury Rothbard in Ethics of Liberty said that man is a rational actor. Clearly he had never met a millennial, and I can get away with that because I am one. <laughs> Men aren't always rational, and that irrationality results in problems. I can imagine anarcho-capitalism working in practice if certain conditions were met, but my question for the ANCAPs out here is, if there is a market for a state, then can we really deny the market? As soon as one person wants a state, that need is met by the entrepreneur. At which point, we no longer have Ankapistan. And if we say no to the market wishing to found a state, then we're going against the market. So for me, this is the sticking point. If the answer to this problem does exist, please point me in the right direction. But yeah, as I say, this is the sticking point. I am of the opinion that, at the very least, if a state does exist, then taxation should be voluntary. There's no justification for a coercive theft system. If people want to pay taxes, then yeah, they should be free to waste their money. But nobody should be forced to pay for something that they don't want nor believe in. And I think every state in existence right now is a criminal organisation full of Play-Dohs, and I think anyone denying that clearly has their head in the sand when it comes to what's happening in places I'd best not mention on YouTube. So I am close to the ANCAP position, but I've simply not had enough time to read about it. And I'd rather be flexible and not nail myself to a cross right now anyway. And even though I'm definitely an, an anti-corporation free market guy, I also don't like the terms anarchism or capitalism. They have negative connotations. The latter was invented by someone who hated free markets, and they give people false impressions as to what they mean. So I think even if I was an ANCAP, I wouldn't call myself one anyway, because I don't think these terms are helpful. Same with the term libertarian or Austrian. Like, I've had people in the comments claiming that I'm standing for the Habsburg monarchy or fascism, because Austria was fascist at one point. 
So new terms need to be created. But in the meantime, I'm just going to describe myself as an anti-corporation free market guy, which I think conveys the message fairly well. With all that said, there were more questions from Pablo about how I see things working and whatnot, but I want to keep this video short so it's more accessible to everyone. And what I'll do is I'll come back to those questions in the future. Let me know where you all stand on this. Did I enlighten any of you to what these terms mean? Comment below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.